How's it going guys? Welcome back to another exciting video. So now let's go ahead and see how we can now utilize our backend Django API and actually send off a request from our front end and then get added to our email list. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we get that automation response and then make sure that everything's working. So this video should be our final one and then we should put all of this stuff to a wrap. So let's go ahead and now see how we can implement this logic. So let me close up these files for the backend since I don't need to deal with the backend anymore, I believe. And let's open up our front end source app.js and I'll close up that side window. So right now um, I imported Axios inside of here and then I'm gonna go ahead and make use of that. So I'm gonna import Axios from Axios and then that way I can go ahead and make this API request. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. So I'm gonna do a const fetch data which is gonna be an asynchronous function. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call this asynchronous function. And then inside of here, I'm gonna do an await axios.post. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this endpoint. And then I'm gonna pass in the correct data to do this. Another thing I want is to have some kind of like loading piece of state. That way I know like whether this is loading. So I'm gonna do const loading set loading which by default is gonna be use state false. And I'm gonna use this piece of data to know whether to show a loader or whether to show the button. So that's basically right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and import a package. So let me go into my front end terminal, stop running this, and I'm gonna import, so npm install dash dash save react loader spinner. So this is a package I'm gonna go ahead and utilize just to make this whole process a little easier. So let's go ahead and check out the documentation for that. So let me go ahead, search React Loader Spinner. And then here I have the GitHub for that. And let's go ahead and see how we can use this thing. So basically you install it like so. So we already did that step. And then this is how you would import it inside of your project. And then essentially you have just like this loader where you can pass a couple properties. So you can have a color, a type, and then a height, width, even you can have like some kind of timeout if you want. In our case, we're not gonna have a timeout. And then here's some different things you're gonna pass. In particular, I wanna make use of this oval. So I'm just gonna copy this and then that way I can go ahead and paste it inside of my React. So I want to have oval, which is gonna be like a circle, spinner, which is just gonna go around in a circle, gonna have the default color just some kind of like blue color. And then we're gonna have like a height and a width. So let me go back here. I'm gonna close up this terminal. So that's installing right below my Axios import. I'm gonna import my loader, which is coming from React Loader Spinner. So we don't see anything suggested right now because it's still installing that package. But once it's installed, you'd see like that suggestion. Then I'm gonna go back where I have that button. And then let's implement some logic. So I'm gonna use my curly braces to implement logic. I'm gonna check if loading is true, then I'm gonna return some JSX. Otherwise, I'm gonna return some other JSX. So in the case where I'm loading, I want this loader. So let me also clean this up and have it all on like separate lines. So just like this. So I'm gonna have this loader. Also, I wanna use single quotes here since I like my single quotes. And then for the height, I'm gonna set as 50. Width, I'm gonna set as 50 to make it a little smaller. And I'm also gonna wrap this inside of a div. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna cut this, place it inside of here. And then I'm essentially I wanna use Flexbox so that I can like center this thing. So I'm gonna pass a class name to this. I'm gonna pass dflex and then justify content center, align items center and then another thing i want is to have some margin at the top and actually no i don't need margin at the top yeah because i added margin at the bottom on this input so this is actually fine just as is so we're good from there and then in the else i'm going to go ahead and return this button and there we are so essentially when this api request is happening i want to show my loader otherwise i want to show my button and then this is pretty easy to implement so like right over here, we're gonna make this API request. Before this starts, I'm also gonna wrap this in a try catch. So I'm gonna have it like so. And then basically before this process starts, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do set loading to true. And then once it's finished, I'm just gonna do set loading to false. 
And then just like that, like before this request happens, I'm gonna wait for it to happen. While we're waiting, loading's gonna be true, and then, we're, then it's gonna be false, and then we're gonna see that button again. So that's all you really have to do. So now our next steps are going to be to basically put in our endpoint. So I'm gonna have HTTP localhost 8000, and then let's go ahead and check out our endpoint. So I'm gonna open up backend, newsletter, urls.py, and then also email marketing urls.py. So let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna have API slash email signup slash, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that right over here, and I also need a slash, and then in my urls.py in here, I have ebook dash signup. So that's gonna be the part that comes after the slash. So this is my complete URL. So localhost 8000, API, email dash signup, slash ebook dash signup. So that's the first thing I need. And I can also put this on separate lines. Another thing I need is my configuration, which is gonna have my headers. So let me do that, say, right over here. So I'll do const config, where I pass in my headers. I'm gonna have an accept header, application slash JSON. I'm gonna have a content dash type, which is gonna be application slash JSON as well. And that's pretty much all I need actually. And then I'm also gonna have a body. So const body is json.stringify. And then just as a little reminder, so this is the data that we need to pass. So when I hit this endpoint, we're gonna go ahead and make use of this ebook signup view, which is gonna be our post request. And then these three pieces of data is what it's expecting. The first name, the email, and the agree. So I need to pass these things along as JSON data. So let's go ahead and do that. So the email, the first name, and the agree. So these are all things that I need to pass along here. And then inside of this axios.post, I'm gonna pass in my body and my config. And then that's pretty much it. I'm good to go. So with this, we should now have the logic implemented on our front end to basically make this API request. And then while this API request is happening, I'm gonna see a loader. And then once it finishes up, I'm gonna not see the loader and I'm gonna see the button instead. And then basically my view here should handle doing all this stuff with the active campaign API endpoint. And we should basically see ourselves added inside of the email list. And then we should also um, see an email received because we're also gonna be in the automation. So let's go ahead and now test all this out and make sure that it's all working as expected. So inside of my React app, let me just refresh. Also, I have to make sure that I'm actually running my front end. So npm run start. So now I'm gonna be running my React front end, and then let's go ahead and see all of this in action. All right, so here's my front end. Let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna put in John. I'm gonna put in the email, so John Doe. And then this is the email I wanna sign up with. If I click here, I have to agree. So let's go ahead, agree to the privacy policy in terms of service. And here we go, we see the spinner. And there we go, the spinner's gone. Let's see what happened inside of my back end. So I should see a 200 okay, ideally. And here we are, we see the 200 okay. So now let's go ahead and check out Active Campaign and see if this actually worked. So this is my documentation. Here's where I have this. So let me go into this contact section. So I should see this new contact added. And there he is, so John Doe was added. So if I click this, I should also see a tag attached to him. So let's see if that's the case. And there we go, we see the free ebook tag was added. So that endpoint ended up working. And then the last thing that should be working is the list. And then if I'm added to that list, he should also be added in the automation. So let's make sure that that's actually the case. So inside of my list, I should see this John Doe user inside of both the master list as well as the free ebook list. All right, so here we are. We see in this master contact list, right now I have two active contacts. And inside of this free ebook list, I have one contact. So let's go ahead and check out this master contact list and see if our John Doe users inside of there, which they should be. So, so this is the list ID of one. All right, so now inside of my master list, I see that I have this John Doe 1357915 account. So once again, that's the one that I actually use to sign up to this. So we see that he's inside of there. And now let's go ahead and just um, rest assured that he's also inside of our free ebook email list. So he should have been added there as well. All right, so here I see my 
email lists. This is taking a little while to load my internet's being a little slow while I'm recording. So let me go ahead and click on this free ebook list. That's the email list we created, which is essentially going to be the list that people are added to when they add their email through this funnel here. And then this was the list ID of two. So once again, you can see the list ID when you actually click on this. And then in the URL, you can like take a look at that. That way you can know which ID to use inside of your Django backend. I mean, it's not the most convenient thing, but I mean, this is basically how you have to work with this, sadly. It would be nice if they like show this data a, a little bit more like cleanly. And then here we are, we have this John Doe user who's added inside of this email list. Now, the last thing I wanna check is my automations. So that's right over here. And I wanna make sure that a user was added to this automation. So if I take a look, Right now we see this little button here. And if I hover over that, contacts currently in the automation, we have one. So let's go ahead and take a look at if we received an email. So this is the email of this John Doe user. Let me refresh. Maybe it's in the promotions. I should receive an email. All right, so basically I didn't actually get an email here, although everything did work. So actually what did happen was that when I did go through this process, this email right here, which was like the sender email, which I signed up with with um, Active Campaign, Essentially, this email here, um, I, I received an email from Active Campaign, which is like, hi, John, we're reaching out in regards to your recent send. So this means that this like initial ebook sign up email sent actually did send. It's just that like they need more information in order to like actually allow this sort of thing to happen. So it was like in order to protect your deliverability, we would like to gather more information about your contact list. How did you how did you obtain the email addresses in your list? Please provide specific details. Where are your subscription opt in forms posted online? Please list all links. Did contacts opt in or engage with your content within the last 12 months? So yeah, basically they expect like more information. So then you can like click this link below to reply. And then from there, you can just kind of like make sure that everything goes according to plan. So in essence, like everything did technically like work. I do have, if I go ahead and click on this automation, so this is that automation. So I did have this check end up happening and then the email was attempted to be sent. And then right now I have inside of my queue that like John Doe user. So if I click on this queue, and here we can see that we have that John Doe user inside of that queue, which essentially means that he went through that whole sequence inside of that automation. So everything in fact did work. And then if you had like a true account with active campaign, and then you had like a legit email, not some like sketchy email, um, like my John Doe 1357933 email, uh, and then had like a legit address and all of that, then everything should work accordingly. But basically based on what I've seen here, that means that, and I guess not just based on this, but like everything else we looked at, we saw that our Django endpoint successfully added that contact we saw that endpoint successfully added the tag we also saw that it successfully added that contact inside of both our master list and inside of our ebook list so that all worked perfectly and then we also see that we attempted to send out this email because they were inside of our automation sequence so all of that did end up working and Essentially, right now you see how you can implement this sort of thing. So anyway, that's going to be everything for this entire tutorial series. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned how to now implement an email newsletter sign up on a custom web application. And anyway, that's going to be everything. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this kind of content. Hit that notification bell if you want to receive notifications whenever a new video comes out. Also, go ahead and click those links in the description because I have a link to the Facebook page, also to the Facebook group. So you can go ahead, like the page, join the group, and that way you can reach out to me personally if you have some kind of general questions on web development mobile app development or on a tutorial that i've created and that way you can reach out to me personally and get help personally from me so anyway that'll be everything and hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next series